Okay, thank you for joining. Uh, one more call. Um, we uh, so this call today is dedicated to to let's say to a focus on data repositories on research on research data. Uh, how, 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 do, how do we manage uh, to aggregate um, content providers that are uh, providing uh, research data records uh, and uh, how do we, how, how do we have this research data in our uh, research graph in our infrastructure um, let's say that this is a community call to clarify some issues regarding the content acquisition policy and uh, and what we need to change in, in our guidelines um, to address some challenges regarding uh, research data um because open air is just starting a campaign to to have more uh, data archives data repositories registered in open air infrastructure so this is one let's say that this is a, a way to start this this campaign involving the community involving that are those that are in fact that are in, in fact providers of, of, of open air um so let's start with um Usually, as you know, we always have a, a topic on the on some updates. We like to share some news or to some highlights regarding the provide service. Then our focus will be the research graph and data repositories, the the content acquisition policy, and the and the changes and the updates that we are doing to the guidelines for data archives, and how can you also contribute and provide the feedback for the this. Um, um public consultation period that we that we that we are doing uh, that we are running right now uh so let's say first we start with this news and updates then we have paulo paulo mangi the the open air technical director to um, discuss with you about uh, to present you the research the, the open air research graph and discuss you, with you about the role of data repositories and the the um, uh, the, the expansion that we are doing within our content acquisition policy um, and then we discuss about the, the updates okay together okay thank you for joining this call let's let's start with some news the first one you know so but uh, it's always important to highlight that we have um, the uh, we did a um, redesign of the provide service so it's available in production since since april uh, we are doing slightly slight changes um, we did uh, in may and in june several um, tests with um, with 10 repository managers uh, uh, from those tests uh, user tests uh, we um, we are selecting those uh, issues that in fact we need to change or to improve a bit in the in the layout of, of our of our provide service um, the user the user tests are always important for any service but it was quite important for for us um, we did all the redesign of the of the service uh, based on input from um, workshops and from surveys that we we, we did um, last last uh, last year and um, yes last year and early this year but we we realized that we need to to change um, and to update some things in our in our layout in order to address some difficulties that uh, during the tests we realized that the repository managers and the users of the services had um, but I think we are quite happy with the service that we have now running so the changes are not big if those that the, those things that are really uh, let's say a big change in in the layout we will um postpone it to a second version of this layout but so other changes we we are doing on in flight so uh, broker events we have already highlighted that in the um, not in this last newsletter but in the previous but as we didn't have the um, a call a community call in june due to the um, to the open repositories conference 
So just want to highlight that in May we have generated the updates in the broker events. They are available um, also in provide. You can you can check it. And it's important to say that um, we start receiving some uh, and also as a result of some user tests um, um, some complaints uh, about the notifications via email. In fact, we had some issues uh, sending notifications via email and. Um, uh, uh putting available the, the information from the broker events in the notification area of our of our dashboard um, the technical team have already realized and uh, solved those issues uh, and uh, we will put it available uh, as uh, as soon as possible so um, what what are we going to do is that we are going to um, to clean the notifications from all the, the users and generate uh, and ask you to generate new subscriptions and uh, and we will start to generate properly these notifications and sending via email properly the notifications for those that have asked to receive the notifications via email so this is important your feedback was important um, uh, so i think uh, Problems are, are more or less solved. We will put it in production as soon as possible. I also need to check some with some colleagues. If, if they are here, they can also provide information later. But so when are we able to do this? But um, so at least we can already say that. I think it's important for you. Some of of the, the those that are participating in this call, in fact, have reported this uh, this this error. Um, I will ask my colleague Andrea to share the link for this other new um, the the Canadian Association of Research Libraries together with uh, with Open Air uh, with the participation of um, <clears throat> a company uh, for science um, have, de have developed uh, plugins for this space version five and version six to. To comply with the the, 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 the open air guidelines version four the, the literature um, guidelines version four uh, which is uh, good um, uh, open air is quite well aligned with the release of new versions um, the new the version seven will be much aligned with our uh, last version of the guidelines but we we are aware of some limitations because the the previous versions are not uh, compatible by default so we are all together in this in this work uh, for, to 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 promote this uh, global interoperability and it was great to have the, this contribution from the Canadian Association of Research Libraries to support to sponsor and support the, these developments for this space specifically for this space only so when we want to highlight this uh, developments uh, with in this call and to share with you uh, so if you are not aware we also published yesterday in the newsletter but andre will also share here in the link for the, the news item for you to be aware of this and the last novelty before we have uh, um Paul among with us it's about the user statistics you are aware of some uh, issues with um with uh, the user statistics service uh, and the availability of uh, proper um, figures from the user statistics in uh, in, uh, in provide service, it's important to highlight two things: statistics, uh, real numbers uh, are already available in Explore, uh, in the repository page uh, in Explore, in the in the providers page. You can see the the, the numbers there; uh, we, they are correct. Uh, and then in the different places of, of, of explore when it comes when it relies with the um, when so the information that is related with the, with each repository is each provider the numbers are not the uh, in the statistic information are it's not fixed in the um, in um, in provide so service okay we also have some colleagues here responsible for the, the user statistic service if you have questions please ask we can we can reply these questions in the, in the chat or, or later here in this call so feel free to ask questions about this so uh, i will not 
reply now i will maybe via chat but later we can we can answer so we can make comments or uh, if you find any issue just just um, just share with us um so we are for the user statistics specifically we are we are um, uh, gradually uh, performing all these corrections uh, repository by repositories for those repositories that have enabled already the user statistics service um for the new it's not it's not a problem it's it's only a problem for those that have already enabled this year last year two years ago the, the service so we will fix this but for the new we don't have uh, any any issue okay these are the, the highlights there are other things that uh, so are are, are also interesting um, so in the previous uh, in june in june we have invited you all to to, to participate in the in the session during the open repository in the open repositories conference session uh, where Paul Mangi in fact was, was also Paul Mangi have presented the the COVID uh, uh, gateway open science gateway that we have in, in open air so it's another interesting novelty uh, it's a different service not the provide service but I think you you need to be aware because the content that you provide to open air is also available in that in that um, gateway so it's another novelty so there are other things that are also new which is important to highlight but i just want to highlight these four specific um, information so uh, let's move to the to, sorry to the next topic and uh, we'll invite uh, paulo um, the technical director of open air to to join me and to do this uh, presentation in order for us to to be aware of um, um, research data data repositories in our infrastructure uh, and what we want to change what to, what is new uh, and what we want to promote in the coming months thank you paulo for your your availability thank you all let me try to show my slides first yes, I will stop. Okay. can you see them now yes yes but not the right one okay wait a second it's back uh, now, now yeah yeah wait a second it's always an issue with uh selecting the proper okay um, in our... do that again okay now always a bit when we share all all desktop <laughs> because we okay okay, now, okay. thank you uh okay so let me go through quickly uh about this presentation so you know a little bit already of open air but um what we're trying to do at the technical and networking level is in fact to facilitate this process right so bridging uh the work done by scientists and uh, uh the world where the results are published so making these two worlds uh, as connected as possible uh, possibly transparently right so what we would like to happen ideally is that the scientists perform science and all his results or her results are being published uh, automatically on his behalf and of course prior authorization uh, by uh, the machinery he's using uh, exceptions made for the of course the narrative part which is uh, of which the scientist is in charge but we can surely dream of a, of a world where this process especially uh, facing the needs of open science uh, will be dealt with uh, mainly by machines right so open science requires us to publish uh, the whole process and this requires a lot of manual effort if we compare it to the traditional procedures unbearable it's one of the barriers we know. So open air is working in that direction. So aligning globally and uh, uh, all these uh, activities which are necessary for this um, paradigm of open science to be uh, implemented. So for that, technically speaking, so I'm skipping the networking part, we're providing a number of services. Uh, the, the, the layer at the bottom, uh, as you can see, shows a number of services in support of publishing science uh, from data management plans with Argos, Amnesia for uh, anonymization of data, Zenodo for storage and, uh, uh, let's say, persistence of, uh, of data uh, uh, 
long-term preservation of data, and as well as other services that are allowing us to bridge again to automatically publish uh, from thematic services uh, to uh, uh, data sources, scholarly communication data sources, our scientific results. On top of that, uh, we build another set of services which are there basically to monitor the quality and track uh, how science is uh, doing overall. For example, in Scholar Explorer, we build a collection of links between publications and uh, data sets. And uh, we developed the interoperability guidelines, which you've heard of uh, several times. Um, uh, together with the communities, this is the most important thing, I think. So these are not top down, um, but uh, the results of a bottom up process, which involves the communities as uh, Pedro stressed before. Uh, we provide usage, uh, usage analytics and brokering. Okay, and on top of that, of course, we uh, we build the uh, added value services that we can um, obtain by working on this uh, content that we're collecting, coming from the services below, but coming also from the institutional repositories and coming from the data repositories, which are the subjects of uh, today's talk. So what we are building at the core is what we call the open air research graph. Okay, so um, we call it a graph because it's uh, a metadata collection of entities of different types. So in the same data collections, you have objects which belong to different um, and describe different kinds of objects. For example, publications, data, software, projects, uh, authors, organizations, all these are of different kinds. They have different properties, but at the same time, they're connected, connected by semantic entities. Uh, relationships, sorry, so semantic links, which somehow determine the kind of relationships between the two, two objects. Um, for example, this object is hosted by this repository, or this object was funded by this project, or uh, this publication was supplemented by this data set. So this is why we call it a graph. Um, in order to build this graph, we have to uh, collect metadata from uh, several sources, data sources. Uh, which we stress should be uh, as aligned as possible in terms of uh, the metadata they expose and how describe, they describe the uh, entities uh, they host. Okay, so uh, it's not moving. So as you can see, we are collecting from uh, a variety of sources as well. So we don't focus on one kind, but we try to collect from all sources which believe uh, which we believe are trusted by scientists. Trusted, we mean sources that scientists typically use in their daily activities. Community specific, ranging from community specific to uh, cross community ones, or to scholarly communication services like ORCID, or uh, as you can see on the left side, or uh, data site, Crossref, uh, from the thematic publishers and the thematic repositories, uh, but also to the aggregations of those, which in several cases provide us with a lot of added value. For example, Unpaywall, uh, Microsoft Academics is one of the samples, uh, also from open citations. And uh, we range out to other kinds of products like uh, GitHub uh, for software and research software, uh, et cetera. Uh, we include funders and, as a specific case, also research infrastructures. So we are trying to uh, open up and reveal, give the dignity of uh, research results to products, research outcomes, which are typically hidden uh, by the, the services that we know. Only recently, we uh, made a step towards data, research data. Uh, we were used only to publications. In open air, we're trying to go beyond that. So we include other kind of uh, products in the research life cycle and for the evaluation and assessment. So how we build the graph, we collect from 12,000 data sources roughly, we build a raw graph, then we deduplicate uh, the content of the graph because the same records can be collected from different sources and uh, we enrich the graph after this, this step by full text mining. Uh, we have about 15 million PDFs on top of which we perform mining uh, in order to uh, infer links between entities. Typically, uh, this publication has been funded by this project or this publication is linked to these data sets or to this piece of software. And we create the corresponding entities in the graph. So we, be, we build the graph that is enormously and much more richer than the one that you can build by just, uh, just by collecting the metadata. 
Um, on top of this, we propagate this content. So that's, that's a nice um, uh, activity because we, uh, thanks to the relationships, we can propagate the contextual information of one object to another object that is related with it. Uh, for example, if I know that a project has funded a publication and the publication is supplemented by a data set, I can easily state that the data set uh, has also been concerned with the project and is related with it. So on top of the graph, we provide a number of services. We expose the, the, the graph to APIs, dumps, et cetera, and we build a number of services for discovery and monitoring mainly. But also, for example, the added value that we provide, we provide. So the, from the graph, we can of course redistribute the information to the original sources when we are able to enrich uh, their metadata records. Uh, so let's keep going here. Uh, I'm not going through this, it's not so interesting. Of course, we include registries. So we rely on existing registries. We are not reinventing PIDs. We're not reinventing the wheel. And these are just a list of the ones that we have. We count today 30 funders, roughly, with 300 and dot, sorry, 3.5 million projects. And uh, the inference we uh, perform, we do it at the level of the project. So we can tell exactly with the 99, 98.8 uh, uh, approximation rate that a publication is related with the project. Uh, provide. Provide was just mentioned uh, several times here. So uh, one activity that you can perform if you're a, a, a data source or a content provider is to register your service to provide. This means that you, you, have, you need to have your source, a uh, data repository, for example, uh, register to re data, in this case, if it's a data repository. Um, we push for this because we want these services to become the, the way, the way we normalize and we align the information about data sources worldwide. Um, once it's in, you can uh, point to it from open air and start your activity of uh, data collection, um, metadata collection. Uh, the first step is, of course, to make your repository compliant to the guidelines. Uh, you can validate this process through provide. So uh, get feedback on how uh, uh, your uh, metadata complies to the guidelines, to different versions of the guidelines, and get a report on how to improve it. And of course, you can have other added values like uh, the measure, uh, like user statistics, and also the enrichment of the metadata through the broker, which you've heard about before. Um, now, uh, let's go through this, you register, etc. Data acqu content acquisition policy, this is uh, an, an important thing. So if you go today to the uh, production portal of OpenAir, uh, you will notice that uh, the majority of the objects inside are open access. And that's because in the previous uh, era of OpenAir, we were mainly focusing on open access publications. So we kept this rule because the commission wanted that, was part of a tender so we had to measure the ratio between open access and non-open access publications uh, funded by uh, EC projects. And that was uh, the, the deal in the beginning. So we, we needed to uh, somehow measure the take, in, the take up of the mandates of the commission, the open access mandates. Then things changed. So what we are currently doing today is to build uh, a broader graph that contains all possible objects out there independently of the license. Uh, so that, that we are able to measure the trends uh, in Europe and worldwide, in fact, with respect uh, to different funders, not only to the Commission, with respect to uh, resource communities, and measure research impacts and monitor their uh, attitude. So we change the content acquisition policy for this. So we collect everything as long as um, it complies to guidelines, First of all, this is the, the, the most important thing. And um, as long as it is material that is related with, with research, okay? So if you take a look at the guidelines as they are, you will have a deeper uh, pick uh, in, uh, in the next presentations. Uh, you will notice they're based on standards, so we are not reinventing the wheel. Building application profiles on top of that, uh, thanks to, again, agreements with the communities. So you should consider the guideline uh, an evolving product. Uh, with which you can play, you, you can give feedback and uh, together uh, improve and make evolve in the future. Now, the important thing is that when we collect metadata records, uh, 
ideally we're talking about data repositories, literature repositories, but we don't really believe it. So uh, apart from, we, we, see, we see repositories that let's say they are uh, pure from this sense. Uh, they only provide data, not as exceptions, but like um, specific, to specific to to disciplines mainly, most of the time. We tend to consider data sources as hybrid. So for this reason, every time we collect the metadata record from a, 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 from a source, we inspect the specific type or resource type of the object, and we try to map it into a meta category of the graph, publication, data, software, or others. Okay, so a data repository like Zenodo may contain, for example, research software, uh, or uh, it's the same for Figshare. It's the same for publication for institutional repositories, which in several cases contain data and software. So we try to remap the objects where they belong. So in the classifications, in the neater classifications that we have uh, in open air. So this is a general process you have to take into account. So if your repository is not purely data, we don't mind, okay? We also include other stuff and you should make sure this stuff is properly described in your resource type so that we can map it to the proper place and the proper classes. Uh, added value services, I'll be uh, quick here, but I wanted to touch on this, it's very important. What you get out of this? So once your data source is in open air, what do you get out of this? Well, of course, more, more visibility and, and discovery, et cetera, but there are other things that are very interesting. The first one is the broker. When we collect one record from a data repository, for example, we throw it into the graph, we deduplicate it, so we put it together with other similar records if the data set has been deposited somewhere else, for example, and we uh, build links around it. Right, so we can we may find a link between the data set and the project with the data set uh, and an ORCID ID you didn't have, for example, we bring them in. And the good news is that we can send this data, uh, this metadata back to you. So you can, in principle, enrich your collection, make it more complete than it is, uh, thanks to the broker. This is the first benefit. Uh, of course, discovery, as I mentioned before, once your data set is in, it reaches out different communities which we're serving today. So through the graph, uh, you may provide your content to specific disciplines or to cross uh, discipline search or to funders. Uh, research impact is another important aspect. So we provide research impact, for example, for EGI, for uh, the main uh, research infrastructures for RDA itself, uh, but also for the commission. So as a result of that, your data sets will be exposed for monitoring uh, to all scientists who want to report them to the commission. And this is where I want to show you the integration with third party services. The EC Sigma, which is the portal, for example, the, from the commission, the participant portal, will show all the data sets potentially related with the project to the uh, project coordinator or to the person on behalf of which the coordinator is uh, uh, reporting the, 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 the research outcomes. So you will be provided with a list of data sets related with the project and be able to select them. Scopus is the same thing. So uh, if you expose your links through uh, your data site uh, 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 metadata, links from your, say, your uh, research data set to a publication, these links will be exposed to Scopus they point to us, they point to our APIs in order to resolve the links. And uh, we'll be soon fully integrated with ORCID. So ORCID users will be able to access uh, the open air, integrated access with open air, and therefore select all the products which go well beyond the publications and then can include the data sets uh, that are provided by your repository. Uh, all content is available through open APIs and dumps. So you can, in any case, um, be sure that your metadata will be made available for science, for research, for innovation, for uh, anybody who wants to build added value on top of that. I'm done. So uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer. Many, many thanks, Paul. Yes, feel please feel free to, so you don't need to use uh, the chat if you want to, to just um, 
use your microphone just to ask questions feel free to to, to join uh, I think this is the, what what Paulo have highlighted now in, in one of the, the last slides regarding the integration with the, the third parties I think it's a it maybe it's a novelty for some of you and it's quite important because when when Paulo mentions that uh, um, so Scopus or uh, Sigma or um, uh, Orchid uh, will use or are using open air so in fact they are using open air and open air content open air APIs and they are um, linking to your um, to your um, content so the content that the open air can gather from 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 you uh, uh, and we have we we collect it in in, in open air infrastructure so feel free to ask uh, questions so I will uh, or, or or I will continue it with the two or three more slides that I have just to highlight the changes in the in the guidelines and how can you participate to align with this new content acquisition policy but um, uh, you have any question i know that uh, we have we have one question in the in the document that we usually let me check if there are but it's not uh, related with this presentation i will i will reply to this question uh, at the end, but it's, it's it's not related with all of presentation. It's a, a technical issue regarding the space repositories, but I will answer. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, uh, it's fine. Don't worry. Uh, I'm always available for that. So uh, yes, just 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 stay with us because uh, so yes, we finish the call in in, in thirty in twenty three minutes. We will we will. Um, for sure there will be questions let's see let's see okay thank you paul just uh, we'll just share the screen just to highlight um okay just um okay uh I will skip this. You can you can um, check in the slides that we have already shared things about the content acquisition policy. So specifically for for data archive managers for the our data repositories, uh, for several of you that I know uh, that are in participating in this call that have these hybrid repositories in, in in your institutions, for example, that Paulo mentioned. Some some of you, in fact, are. Um, have uh, a repository that is providing publications and also have registered the same repository the different collection to provide also data but there are other participants here that have um, a, a specific data repository to be part or that is already part of open air so um, regarding the, the the specific guidelines that we have uh, for data archive managers for data repositories uh, we um, so we 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 are preparing a new version of these guidelines um, to align basically to fully align with our uh, content acquisition policy that is uh, much more open regarding research data and uh, to align also with the um, uh, data seed uh, schema uh, so uh, we have already, um, our colleagues from Bielefeld University have already prepared a draft that is available, that is publicly available in order to make the process of feedback easier and you can comment. So it's really a draft that is in this link available for you to, to, to make comments. Uh, what is important to say is that, uh, okay, uh, this version three of the guidelines for that archive managers um, are so uh, aligned with the um, data seed the, the last the, the schema version 4.3 of data seed um, also use additional vocabularies for example from coar vocabularies instead of the the old info or repo that in the literature guidelines don't have it so we need also to update the, this version of the guidelines in order to avoid this um, 
this alignment between the different versions of the of the different types of guidelines so this is important there are some also alignments with with um, the vocabularies that uh, the confederation of open access repositories have available regarding um, access rights for example um, and uh, so we also uh, uh, want to to update the, the guidelines uh, to align with the uh, fair data fair data principles um, uh, and also with with plan s uh, so you can check the draft that we have already available in this in the following link so um, let me put also here uh, so you, you can check this information uh, and also um, how to contribute to the um, uh, with with comments so for sure we will have um, another call where we we can dedicate some time to to some details of the of of, of this new version of the guidelines but um, feel free to visit this uh, this page uh, to comment we also have a, a google document where we um, where we want to receive your feedback uh, so this document was already available we also shared this document in previous um, in previous calls or in some workshops that uh, we have organized already but feel free to to contribute to make uh, your contributions there and provide your feedback but you can also use directly the the, the open air guidelines github repository to uh, to to create to to create an issue and uh, and uh, and suggest uh, changes. Um, so basically, this is what we want to to highlight to say that we have this version that is aligned with the new content acquisition policy, uh, and is something important in order to facilitate the registration. Um, you can also check this Google document where you. Can contribute. Uh, so maybe Andrea is also sharing these all these links in the in the community call. Just to highlight, you you all are aware of the registration process, um, and Paulo also shared the slide. I just want to I put just here an arrow to just to say that um, it's important to to say that um, if if uh, so it, let let me just because I forget here. It's important also to say, to say that these new guidelines. So we don't have any more this uh, concept of uh, of a specific set for data. Okay, um, if you have your uh, data, uh, your and if you can expose the content from your repository um, uh, based on the on the, the specifications that we you have, but you don't have a specific set uh, uh, to comply with the. The previous version so just just register your repository this is what i want to highlight so um just register then we will uh, provide you feedback if we we have any issue but in this process that we don't have the new version of the guidelines but we also want your content your data repository to be registered in open air uh, feel free to register to and then we will check uh, if there is, uh, if you need to, to change something in your, in your interface, um, but uh, but feel free to do that because there is now uh, it's um, in terms of support and the way that we disseminate properly the information is a strange period because there is a disalignment between the last public version, the final version of the guidelines and the content acquisition policy, and uh, what we want to proceed. So. In between, in this process, I hope that after summer we have already the final version of the guidelines and there is a full alignment and also our validator is aligned with the last version of the guidelines. In between, because we have this disalignment, guidelines, validator and content acquisition policy, feel free to check the draft to, to register uh, and then if it's not possible for us, we will provide the feedback. But uh, uh, you don't need to have a, a successful registration against the version two of the guidelines to be available to be registered in open air so we will we will do that for you and we will provide you feedback 
somewhere in September, October. Uh, I hope that we will have the conditions to have the, the, all our services alignment from the guidelines to the validator in order to provide a proper support for you. Okay, I just want to highlight you this information. So you already, uh, so you are aware that you need to be registered in the, in our authoritative um, data repository directory with three data to then to 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 request for registration in uh, in uh, in open air. Okay. So this is the information that I want to to give after Paulo's presentation. Um, is there any question? So we have one question here in the chat. In the chat now in the Google document uh, regarding the um, the this space values. Okay, uh, so uh, the, the do the DC type values in this space have to be the same values as required in driver to be compatible with open air? So I will reply. But uh, so we have other colleagues from open air that uh, are also here available if if um, they want to jump in and to answer. But so. Um, we have um, uh, in the in the in version uh, in the previous versions of, of open air uh, so the dc types were uh, fully aligned with the with driver now the dc types that we are suggesting are aligned with the coar vocabularies types okay um so please check that so there is there are the those that are in driver uh, in previous version of, of open air guidelines and now there is a new um, let's say uh, list of types that we use that uh, it's global is a result from the confederation of open access vocabulary is a working group so we are aligned with that specific and one of the vocabularies that we are using in our guidelines is the, the, the types resource types um, from coar uh, but um, maybe in this question there is another explanation um, if I well understood. So um, so you can you can map you can use the type of type that you want to use in your repository. Uh, you can align with something internal, or you can align with uh, the driver or the coar uh, resource types. But what we open air ask is that you need to map your types to those that we have uh, in our guidelines. So whatever you use, what we want from you is that you can expose the types aligned with our types. So um, you can use different types in your repository for internal reasons to comply with the um, internal procedures. Uh, of course, there are types that are a bit universally, like article, book, etc. But you can use your types, your list of types that, from my perspective, should be aligned with uh, with standards. But then, what you need to expose is those that are uh, aligned with us. So you can transform, you can map, and uh, expose your um, your uh, types compliant with our comp compliant with our guidelines. Um, We have another question from Akis. If you want to to to, to put your questions in on uh, uh, using the audio, you can do it. We are installing an institutional repository within Venue RDM, and there is a link to Open Air. As far as we know, is there an only is there only a technical link, or it, is there a need to fill in form or to apply for the connection to Open Air? Just as okay. Okay. So um, you, if you are if you are installing the Invenue RDM solution, uh, you need to to register your repository. So first register in Re3 date and then register in in Open um, I would like to have uh, uh, contributions from uh, from um, from our colleagues from uh, from CERN that are managing the Invenue to understand this question of the link because the link the direct link that we have is from Zenodo it's not from a standalone installation but maybe there is something new for, that is also new for me which is good <laughs> no problem that they, they they know so 
If we have any additional comment, we will put it here in this document. Uh, but the first answer is yes, that you need to register. Um, but I will I will clarify this uh, direct link from this um, venue RDM um, software platform. If if there is anyone in this um, call that can help me, so just jump in and, and help me with this answer. But um, Brianna, is there any improvement in procedure or workflow for clean the data for organizations? Okay, Paulo, this is a great question from our colleague Brianna that you may want to, to answer. I think in one of the previous calls, I have already um, a little bit opened <laughs> uh, the, the, this uh, new service that we want to to, yes. to have in open air to to curate organizations, but maybe you can you can present because this is something critical that repository managers. It is, have. it is so. critical. It is critical. So, the good news is that we have developed it, so it's there. the 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 bad news is that we haven't tested it yet, and uh, I think this was something that Najla uh, wanted to bring in. So we need testers. So we need testers from the nodes. This would be uh, the best scenario for us uh, because we believe the nodes will be the ones that at the national level can do this job. And uh, the, the, the idea of the tool is simple, is to curate a collection where the first collection, so the, the starting collection is the one that we obtain by doing what we can in terms of uh, technical efforts for the, the duplication. And um, curators can, at the national level, so we, we have for the moment uh, this uh, assignment of users to countries, at the national level they can curate the result, which means uh, uh, dismiss the results, so say, no, you're wrong, or instead group different collections, etc. This uh, this is saying it's... Do you want to share a bit uh, with uh, our community? The service uh, should I share? Do you want to yes, share yes. it? Okay. So Just you, to you, open can, the... you can show what it yeah, is. Have, uh, um, seven uh, or eight minutes more if you want to do it. I, uh... No, no, no. Just go ahead. I mean, uh, probably you are more familiar with it than I am. So uh, I've used it a couple of I'm times sure, sure. when we were designing the the, the service. So uh, we have a sample uh, data set in there. Um, the, yes, I'm just opening this, so a better service just here, really uh, simple. So, Paulo, you you can you can introduce what is this concept, and as we have four or five minutes, maybe we can share this. So, yes. So, what you have is uh, the service suggesting you uh, which are the new duplicates that have been found that require your uh, validation, and which are the ones. Uh, that may raise conflicts um, uh, and that you need to resolve. You can undo everything decision you make, but just keep in mind that whatever you do uh, in, uh, from time to time is taken and used uh, as the, course, uh, the core organization set into the, into the open air. So you, you, can see, you can see here to the right, for example, you may say, yes, this belongs to this group, or no, that doesn't belong to this group. This is a choice that you can undo in the subsequent phases. Or you can search and select another uh, entry that is not being identified automatically and include it into this group. You can edit the name of the group, the name of the university, so you, you have a lot of curation power, right? The core uh, is taken from grid, but we will include ROAR because ROAR is the next uh, step after grid. Uh, yes, and again, I'm just sharing here the, the, the different types just for you to. Yes. You see, you have different identifiers. We collect organizations from so many different places. Every funder has its own categorization. Uh, in some cases, they don't even have identifiers, right? So you will have the PIC, PIC for the commission, you will have ISNI, you will have uh, grid identifiers. And at the national level, you may have also identifiers. Um, you can group them. So saying this organization is equivalent to this uh, ID, this ID, this ID, this ID. And this will help us in producing records that are uniform from that perspective. Now, we need 
uh, they know us to become very familiar with this tool and to uh, tell us what's wrong, what is not intuitive, and so on. Um, but this is the way to go. So collaborative approach, because the machine we cannot do it by uh, itself. Uh, there's, the information available is really too little to make decisions. I'm just opening different uh, yeah. different uh, examples. Yeah, just for Universa Maribor, University of Maribor, Universa Maribor. This looks good. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a good guess from the from the, the duplication. Uh, but in some cases, as you will see, uh, this is not easy at all. So we translated uh, from seven or eight, I don't remember, different languages. Uh, all the naming of institutions, like uh, university, department, etc., and, and all the uh, uh, cities and country names, and also uh, the uh, um, subjects, engineering, etc. So. When we can, we translate and we uh, replace the word with a, the with a code and we just compare the code. And then we leave the rest uh, as, um, as uh, the rest of the text, the remaining text as uh, the equivalence relationship that may say yes or no. But again, it's very complicated because the information is sometimes blurry, little and uh, not uniformly specified. So the language is just one of the many barriers. Uh, so we need humans in the loop. Yeah, yeah. And Pedro, this is, this is quite... say... Yes, please. May I say something? Hmm? Yes, of course. Good, good. Okay. I think that uh, this summer is a perfect time to do this, <laughs> for sure. And uh, I think that there are some uh, volunteers in some of our countries who would really like to help you. And uh, I think that uh, the NOAAs in their countries knows uh, all these variations in their institution, and especially they are speaking the language in their country. So yes. uh, it will be good uh, to speed up this process and just to uh, give us to work on this. Uh, let's say from my point of view, I really want to um, be part of this and to volunteer to help you with this. Even I will, uh, so, and I think yeah, that there are also some other notes that they are here, uh, they would like to do on this. Thank you. This, this is very good and uh, we'll make sure that to, to, of course, exploit your enthusiasm as much as possible because we need it. Now, the thing is we need to, uh, uh, make this prog progress incremental. So the first version of the tool that we will provide you with is just there for the only purpose of checking if you can use it, if it's intuitive enough, if there are questions that you may have, and then we'll move it to production. So uh, the, in the first phase, there is no need that you're going to resolve all possible things, but that you, you know how to do it. You learn how to do it. And if you have any hints that may help us improving the tool, they're welcome. Then at some point, we we'll switch it to production. And this is where you will start doing the effective work, right? And your work will be precious. We don't want to waste your time in the first phase. And we need uh, like three, four nodes who will take the role of train the trainers as usual, right? So the, 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 the ones who will give us feedback, make the tool uh, good enough, and then we'll explain others how to use it using the language of the noise rather than our uh, uselessly uh, complex technical language. Okay, so it's very important that we do this and we need somebody to take the lead on this process. Uh, as technically, uh, the technical team is quite uh, busy with so many things. So we'd really appreciate if some of you would take this forward. Yeah, thank you, um, Brian, and thank you, Paul. So I think th th this is this is uh, in, in, organizations are critical for all the scholarly communication um, services, uh, and it, it's quite important for the the providers. So if OpenAir can, uh, okay, fix this uh, for the benefit of, of OpenAir, uh, it will be a benefit for the community. So this is something important. Yeah. 
not so we are coming to an end i'm not just, sure if you have any other questions one last, thing, one last thing very important this chat yes, yes. will be made open of course and public so for the whole world to use so um, it will be very important to have it so it's not just an internal product of open air so the whole collection will be published uh, normalized so for um every organization will say which are the uh, corresponding equivalent identifiers we we'll give it back to roar we we'll give it back to grid we we'll publish it to the world okay so we can uh, we can promise that we um, uh, that we will say something uh, as soon as possible i think we, what is important follow just to, is that we establish a process how to what to do technically and how to involve people and then we we have Two, two or three from us coordinating the process and I think in terms of involvement of the community as Brianna said I think it's, it's easy Re relying on uh, on, uh, on 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 no ads on the national open access test for open air and some other contributions from the community that are also closed to our no ads or to, in fact at the national level they are collaborating with our no ads in different uh, bodies informal or formal so for sure, it will be easier to. I think. I think from the, those that I know that are participating in this call, there are different people, even if they are not part of Open Air, that can also they can contribute to the to, to this. Good. So, Very. Okay. So I don't know when and how, but for sure, um, if not before via a different channel. Um, uh, so I uh, I have my so I put. As a, a promise from my side, I will provide something as a, a, a information about this in the next uh, community call. So <laughs> we put a topic there uh, to provide some uh, uh, information about this. If you are already, if we are already doing something, or if it's expected and when. Okay. So um, I, I was ch checking the chat. We don't. Uh, no, no questions in the chat. No questions no. in the. I think I have already replied to the question. So feel free to put comments and the and questions in the in the in the community calls uh, um, Google document that we have. Uh, we we will answer during the the coming days or during the month. So I know we, sometimes people use it to to other comments. So feel free to do it. Um, use and access the provide service. Uh, feel free to use. We are open for all the feedback, as you know, via our Trello dashboard uh, available now uh, please um, record this uh, this google document and the draft of the guidelines it's quite important and be available for this the campaign that we want to run uh, to have more data repositories in us so some of the no ads from open air that are here we are counting with you to to for this campaign and all the, the rest and all the others so be be available to register your data sources or to or if you have any issue i know that some of you have already registered if you have any issue just ask also feel free always to ask questions because the people that usually answer the tickets in the help desk they are here in this call so <laughs> you have a direct link <laughs> uh, sometimes in the community calls we have uh, specific requests and that are answered so today we we didn't have any but uh, feel free to, to ask questions so and thank you for joining this uh, call um i'm not sure andre uh, uh, i'm not sure if you have put it the the already the dates for the upcoming calls in the um, no. in the second semester no. not yet but we will put uh, as you so you have this link um in our uh, website uh, where we have all the, um, the the agenda for the different calls the the plan for the calls we will put uh, if not today tomorrow the the dates for the the, the call all the calls from the second semester uh, and all the recordings in the web in the slides are there okay available so many thanks for joining and uh, paulo many thanks for your support i think it's always great when we have your presence in this um, and participation in these calls, I think. So um, all our content providers realize 
the power that they the open air have to 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 produce some useful services not only for them specifically but for for the for europe and for the world so many thanks for your presence okay in this call and uh, stay safe everyone for those that will have holidays so good holidays see you in the next call uh, maybe in the first wednesday of september i don't think we will have uh, in august so for sure our next call will be on on the first wednesday of september bye bye all <laughs>